And let's talk more about the future of the monarchy, shall we? I welcome in Clive Irving, author of The Last Queen, Elizabeth II's 70-year battle to save the House of Windsor. Clive, great to have you back. You know, as the world has shifted in so many ways during Queen Queen Elizabeth's seven-decade reign, there is speculation now about a possible exodus by some nations from the Commonwealth. Now that Charles is king, what do you expect will happen now? Well, that's a, a very significant challenge to Charles. While it's true that the Commonwealth is dedicated to, to democratic principles and has been an admirable organization in, in assuring a basically bloodless transfer from empire and from colonies to the Commonwealth, you can't wipe out the history. And the history really begins with Charles II, who in 1666 founded, uh, gave a royal charter to a company called the Royal African Company. Now that may sound a very grand name, but what it really was, was a very evil enterprise in that it began shipping slaves from Africa across the Atlantic uh, to British colonies in the Caribbean. And uh, at least a quarter of the slaves on those ships didn't survive the journey even, never mind what happened to them when they ended up in this new plantation culture. You've got to remember that colonialism's basic use was the transferring of other people's natural resources into your own wealth. And in this case, the wealth was very important to the growth of the British Empire. And a lot of, the, uh, ironically, uh, the, the monarchs that followed Charles II it, it used that, a lot of that money coming in from uh, slave trade to build up uh, magnificent art collections. Quite a lot of that art collection is now residing in Buckingham Palace as part of the royal art collection. So in a, in a sense, the royal treasures are tainted by blood. Um, uh, but it's more important to, really to think about the human impact of this. And I can understand why Barbados, for example, take, I take an example of tiny Barbados, which broke away last year, no longer wants the British head of state. In the 1660s, the value of the sugar crop from Barbados, tiny Barbados, was worth more than all the gold that was shipped to the Spanish Empire from South America. These, these uh, commodities like sugar, when they were first dis discovered, like the spices, had enormous wealth, uh, generated enormous wealth for the white, um, for the white supremacists who ran those colonies. And even though the British Empire ended slavery in 1834, uh, that was a, an advance, but actually that masked the truth of the situation, which was those societies remained uh, basically white supremacist societies in which the advancements of black people, colored people, was very difficult uh, for at least another century. And I think that when Kate and um, William ended up in the Caribbean early this year, as you showed in that previous clip, they were shocked and surprised to find the strength of feeling uh, that remained there. Right, the and reaction. I think, yeah, and it's going to be so, very difficult. So let me that. ask you about that, Clive. That is a, a, a touchy subject. That's a part of history that, uh, that needs to be talked about and, and confronted. Um, and, and it wasn't for so long. And then that, that's why that moment created so much controversy and conversation. So moving forward, when we just talk about the slave trade, when we talk about the art at Buckingham Palace, when we talk about, for example, Barbados and, and, and the tension you just described and the history that's involved, does this new monarchy need to change? Do these things need to be confronted and talked about? Do we need to hear apologies? Do we need to move forward with more of a modern perspective of what happened and and be more upfront? The episode that involved uh, William and Kate shows that they were not sufficiently briefed or even educated on the history of the, place that, the places that they were sent to. So that shows you that there's not a high level of skilled management. Indeed, your basic question is, is is the essential one, really, which is how fast can how fast is the learning curve? You can't go on suppressing this kind of history forever. Ever, you can't go on shoving it to the side. You've got to deal with one of the big tests of Charles would be be to stop whitewashing the history of the Windsors. The history of the Windsors has been, has been systematically whitewashed for at least the last 50 years. They've got to come to terms, not with their own their, their own direct responsibility, they've got to come to terms with the reputation of the institution. Point well made. 
Clive, we will continue to talk about that as we move forward. It's an important conversation to have. Clive Irving, thank you so much.